There are four markets in investments that we need to be prepared to understand for the securities exams. The primary market, or the new issue market, is basically the market where the issuer is the one that is benefiting from the transaction. Any IPO, SPO, APO, that is an initial public offering, a subsequent public offering, an additional public offering, or an add-on public offering, or similar types of public offerings from an issuer or company is done in the primary market. The primary market has a fixed price system. They are selling the new security at a fixed price. If you're interested, you'll pay that price. If you want it cheaper, well, you'll have to wait and hope it falls. There is no negotiation. There is no auction here. Simply fixed prices from an underwriter. Any underwriter not selling at this fixed price or withholding from a bona fide good faith public offering is guilty of the unethical business practice called withholding or free riding. The primary market requires a physical location as well. The secondary market is an auction market. It too requires a physical location, but the prices are are determined by the best bidder. If you've ever seen a movie where there are a bunch of traders and brokers and dealers and things running between different sort of computer stations on the floor of the stock exchange, that is most likely the secondary market. The third market is the -the over-the-counter market, the OTC market, or internet and telephone trading. Anyone who trades with a neighbor is in the third market. Anyone buying from an online brokerage or a brokerage that is not at an exchange location is doing third market transactions. The third market is negotiated. The buyer and seller agree to a price and then commence the transaction. The fourth market is Instanet. It is large block trades with institutional clients. It can be referred to as dark pools of liquidity. It is where Vanguard would trade with Fidelity and Oppenheimer trades with Putnam. It can be hard to move hundreds of thousands or more shares of one security all at once through the lower markets. It is important to realize, though, that it doesn't really matter what that is being traded, much more so how it is being traded that determines what market it's in. I, Brian, the narrator of this extremely high-tech, special effects-driven, super-complicated animation series, am a nerd. If you've just heard of me, it is understandable that you don't know that. If you've been here a while, and you didn't know that, Well, that's on you at this point. I am very clear and open that I am a nerd. And I watch documentaries on some truly random things sometimes. One of those random things that I watched a documentary on was actually a documentary on sneakers. Yes, not only does that one exist, there are others that exist too. As I was trying to find that initial one and discovered something like five others that weren't the one I was looking for. Lots of documentaries on sneakers. Anyway, there were basically two very useful pieces of information that I learned from that that are needed here. Again, this documentary is a little old, but I don't think these data pieces are out of date. The first bit is that the largest shoe market, by dollars, of sneakers in the world is the new market of Nike shoes. The second bit of information that is useful here is what the second largest shoe market, by dollars, is. So what do you think the second largest shoe market by dollars is? Adidas, New Balance, Skechers, Asics, Puma, Under Armour? Those I read from a current listing of shoe companies, basically starting at number three. I may have been a little misleading. I did say the largest market of shoes was the new market of Nikes. The second largest market of shoes? The second largest market of shoes is the market of trading collectible Nikes, of previously issued Nikes. That is a larger by dollar market than any of those other new brands. The old Air Jordans or whatever like that. Now I nerded out on that a bit to be able to make this following analogy. Imagine Foot Locker is buying shoes from Nike directly. Nike is getting the proceeds of these sales. And it is a physical location of that Foot Locker. That basically is now a primary market. Foot Locker, through a centralized location, their stores, sells the shoes to the public. 
Although not really an auction, this is basically a secondary market transaction. Foot Locker could also sell online, or there could be some people that go to the store, buy some shoes for friends, and then would sell them to their friends when they get out of class or something for 5 or $10 more to help pay for the gas, cover their time, or whatever. And this would be the third market. Now, the fourth market is, is a bit of a stretch here. It is why I needed you to understand how large the secondary trading of issued Nikes is. The closest to the fourth market I can come with this analogy is large collectors trading between themselves, moving hundreds of classic shoes at one time. There was an episode of Pawn Stars where Chumley is called to one such collector's collection. I truly do not understand fashion. If you've seen me out in public, you clearly understand that. But when they explained that the value of these thousands of shoes was six or even seven figures, I think Chumley offered him half a million dollars and he said no. It is hard to move such huge blocks of shoes like that. Just like it is hard to move huge blocks of stock. That would basically be, this is the, basically the example of the fourth market. Again, it is not important what it is being traded, but how it is being traded that determines the market. All securities outside of mutual funds and other redeemable securities are traded on the primary market once, but then can bounce around the others or just stay in one. It could spend its entire life in the secondary market. It could spend its entire life in the third. It could be bought uh, by Vanguard or Fidelity right at the beginning and spend its the whole life there. Or it could be bouncing around, going from the second to the third to the second to the fourth to the third to the fourth to the second, bouncing around. It is how they are traded that determines what market it is in, not what that is being traded. 